Today's subject is about scars and how they're going to be a major issue within your practice. I'll also be covering how red light therapy is an excellent tool in dealing with overcoming roadblocks that are created by scars, which can give you a false positive when you're doing your kinesiology testing. What I want you to understand, even before we get started, is that the scar tissue that you see on the surface of the body does not accurately reflect what is below the surface. Now the human body is a self-contained organism and it has everything it needs to thrive. Any intrusion into that sealed environment, such as incision from an operation or even an accident that could create an open wound, will upset the body's natural processes and leave residual trauma and that is basically what the body will classify as an injury. So there is a healing process that happens after the injury occurs and it results in the development of scar tissue. And now that scar tissue not only holds the negative energy memory of the event, but it also acts as a barrier that prevents the natural flow of the body's energy to proceed past that point of the injury. Now the effect is an accumulation or even a stagnation of energy that often results in new physical problems cropping up in the affected area of the body as well as other areas that are contained within that entire system. And this happens because scar tissue that has been created will now disrupt the pathways along which our entire body's life energy or chi in which it flows. And these pathways are known as the meridians. To help you understand what I'm talking about, I want you to envision a garden hose and how water can freely flow through that hose unobstructed. But if you fold the hose over or even put a twist in it, that same full flow of water is now reduced to a trickle. Now the very same thing happens to the meridians of the body when they are either next to or crossed by scar tissue. The only difference is that the restricted flow would be even greater. And the result is that the health of your client will be greatly reduced within the area of the affected meridian and every organ system that's influenced by the affected meridian. And it's basically due to the greatly reduced energy flow within that meridian. Now that bears repeating. The health of your client will be greatly reduced within the area of the meridian that's affected along with each and every organ that's influenced due to the greatly reduced flow of energy. Now these invisible pathways, whoa, the meridians, run through the entire body. They penetrate every cell, each organ, and every organ system. This is the wiring of the human body. Just as electricity flows through your home, so does electrical current flow through the human body through the meridian system. And the source of this energy, it's the earth. It enters the body through the bottom of the left foot. It travels along each and every meridian and returns to the earth by exiting through the bottom of the right foot. And this is a process that keeps the body grounded and able to cope with day-to-day -day situations and at the same time calm the sympathetic nervous system. So, and that is helping to maintain the overall body health. Now to understand how scars can affect the health of your clients, we need to briefly discuss the nervous system itself. 
So how scars can affect the health of your clients uh, is really simple. So let's start by going over the anatomic nervous system and by explaining what it controls and how it regulates the involuntary automatic functions of the body's organs. The anatomic nervous system consists of two distinct parts and they work in balanced coordination with each other and once that they become out of sync that is when health issues come into play. Now one half of the anatomic nervous system is the sympathetic nervous system and the other half is the parasympathetic nervous system. Now these two branches of the anatomic nervous system have to be in sync with each other so that you're able to keep the fight or flight reflex in check. And about 80% of the fibers of the sympathetic nervous system go directly to the layers of the skin. So there's a coordinated effect, I'm sorry, there's a coordinated flow of electrical nerve energy along the surface of the skin via the peripheral sympathetic fibers of the skin. And that's the main reason that scars are considered to be a major stressor to the body due to this reduced energy flow that affects the peripheral nerve fibers initially and then have an effect upon a specific meridian. Now we all know there's methods to neutralize active scars and these methods include the use of topical application of organic wheat germ oil on the scar itself. But once that red light therapy is also added before the use of organic wheat germ oil, the results received are even greater and at a much faster rate of deactivating and softening of scar tissue. And an integral part in the evaluation of your clients involved in your health improvement program is the proper assessment to determine any disruption of energy that's due to the presence of active scars. Now this is where you can receive that false positive due to a scar being near or crossing over a meridian. You must also be aware that each meridian has a specific job to accomplish as it relates to the entire organ system that it's named after. But you must also remember they all have a secondary task to perform and that's to accomplish uh, by maintaining the energy generation system at various points throughout the entire body. Now when discussing the understanding of meridians all you need to know is basically one meridian that is of main purpose to you. And that main concern is the bladder meridian, since it's the one meridian that all of the other meridians tie into and pull from. In addition, when relating to the body's energy system, the bladder meridian is intimately related to the anatomic nervous system. This is because the bladder meridian runs along the back of the human body from the eyes to the little toe with two parallel branches flowing along each side of the spine. Now these four branches of the bladder meridian directly influence both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic trunks of the anatomic nervous system, which then regulates the fight or flight response and in turn has a definite influence on all of the body's basic vital functions. So even small scars, especially ones located on or near the midsection of the body, can have a troubling effect on the overall results that you might receive during your testing methods. 
Scars such as C-sections, circumcisions, vasectomy scars, and even navels themselves are examples of scars within the torso area that can give you a false positive in your testing process. So this is why keeping the meridians open and having them working at their maximum potential is so important as well as how it relates to your ability to control roadblocks that are created by scar tissue. For if scar tissue is left untreated, it will create the greatest stumbling blocks to your success of your career in helping people. Now, untreated scar tissue can lead to an overactive sympathetic nervous system, which could then compound through tension and pain along the spine and its secondary branches and will over time it'll start to become a fixed pattern of fear. Now that can manifest into such high chronic things as, as high chronic, not sorry, as high blood pressure, ADHD, bipolar disorder, panic attacks, and even a low libido. So holes in the body can have and behave the same way as scar tissue does, especially when they occur along the midline or the torso area of the body. And that can include such things as pierced navels, nose rings, and tongue rings. Now, navel rings will almost always have a detrimental effect on the, your testing, as they not only cross and disrupt the energy flow along the conception vessel, but they are metal and they can have an electromagnetic effect. So usually this, ju this jewelry must be removed and holes that have been created, such as by navel piercings and other piercings. They have to be treated as a scar, which for initial testing is best accomplished through the use of red light therapy. Excuse me. Now, pierced ears can also have a strong effect on the total meridian system. As the ear is a microcosm of the entire body, and it's hard to have an ear piercing that does not directly affect one or more of the meridians. Even tattoos, stretch marks, and burns will also have the same effect as scar tissue, and they need to be cared for in the same manner. So. In your office, you need to test and see which scars that your clients might have and that are interfering with their body's ability to function at its peak and are interfering with your ability to offer them maximum results for both you and your clients' efforts. Another point to remember, maximum results for your clients that do have scars are best treated with organic wheat germ oil and red light therapy. And they need a simple protocol to follow. First, your client needs to rub their scars with organic wheat germ oil once or twice a day for a predetermined period of time. This is usually anywhere from 30 to 90 days, depending on the severity of the scar tissue. The second part involves a use of red light therapy sessions before the application of organic wheat germ oil. This increases the action of restoring the normal ionic function of healthy tissue, thus allowing normal energy flow through the affected area at a much faster rate. Now, you have to realize and get across to your clients that this is an ongoing protocol and it does not it doesn't accomplish results overnight you have to be diligent and supportive of your clients to allow them to the achieve the results that they're looking for and the main point to stress is that the use of an led red light device uses powerful and safe light to stimulate 
the reduction of fibric tissue and at the same time it adds to the healthy tissue replacement through the generation of collagen tissue itself. Now clients usually notice an initial softening of the scar tissue. Next they start to notice a flattening and widening of the scar and this is the normal sequence in scar tissue reduction with several more red light sessions the wide scar will become thinner and remain flat red light therapy penetrates human tissue superficially with approximately 80 percent of the energy being absorbed in the first two centimeters of the skin tissue red light energy has a significant effect on mitochondrial DNA stimulation. This then increases the production of what is known as ATP, which is the foodstuff for mitochondrial DNA itself, which then will increase the cellular activity, which leads to an increase in cellular creation, as well as superficial circulation of the bloodstream which will then create an anti-inflammatory correct uh, anti-inflammatory effect and increase the production of new and healthy cells. Now I have learned about red light therapy and I promote red light therapy because it works. It helps many people in many different ways and it uses and its use as a scar tissue protocol is just one of the many ways that you can become irreplaceable to your clients. This is a necessary and essential tool whenever you're working with clients that are looking for answers that they may have not received from conventional medicine and becoming proficient in red light therapy and making it readily available to your clients will put you head and shoulders above any other practitioner that you may come across. Your ability to make red light therapy available to your clients along with the ability to have them take it home with them and having additional red light therapy devices on your shelf to have for resale. Believe me, they will thank you for providing that option for them. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope that I haven't gone on too much, but I really wanted to get a few points across to you, and thank you for watching.